Oh, 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 man, we got a beautiful day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the farm. Buenos dias, amigos. I don't know how to say welcome yet. Ben Benicio? See? Si? Como se dice welcome in Espanol? I should know this. Today, as we can see, we got beautiful sunshine. It's supposed to be like 85 degrees. One thing I really enjoy about the wind turbines is it's really easy to tell what direction the wind's blowing. And it's also really easy to tell how hard the wind's blowing based off on how fast they're going. So pretty calm today. If you're ever curious, when the wind's blowing 22 miles an hour up there, those are doing 16 revolutions per minute. That is their optimal efficiency. So right now they're probably doing like, we'll say 10 RPM. So 11 mile an hour winds. Last night Cooper pulled in late with the 7140 and his DCX 131 mower. He's doing his second round of first cutting. He did his alfalfa first, then it rained, then he got everything bailed up and stuff on that. Now he's doing his second cutting, which is just regular hay and waterways. I believe he got done last night, rolled in at about 11.30. So he may be getting some extra Cooper help today, depending on if he has some more waterways he needs to mow or not. This morning, I'm sitting in front of the big window in my office. I got the shade open, sun's hitting me, it feels nice, and I'm like, you know, I think we need to get ready for soybean spraying. So right off the bat, we're gonna get the big machine shit. We really need to get that door handle fixed. We're gonna get the big machine shed all opened up. We need to grab that sprayer. It's got a little bit of corn post-emergence herbicide in it. We need to get that cleaned out because that cannot go on the soybeans. Oh man, I don't have headphones. The skid loader has the loudest beeping noise in the world on it. Ooh, it looks like you're probably ready for some grease. Yeah, we should probably. So we're doing pretty good on hydraulic fluid. You get so used to going up and down the sprayer all the time, you get to the point where you can do it without using your hands. And that way you don't have to wear your gloves when you're climbing up and you forgot them in the cab. It's like a bird had a heyday up here or something. It wasn't a bird that left little fuzzies on that exhaust pipe. We got ourselves a raccoon in there. Jeez. Oh my goodness. That thing is crazy. <laughs> Where'd you go, buddy? Holy cow. That thing just took a leap. Mangy looking guy. Why would you want to hang out up there? That guy was probably, he was probably pretty fortunate that I opened up the hood to find him in there. Otherwise, he probably would not have had a lot of fun with the engine fan. Raccoons are incredibly destructive little guys. I hope he didn't get into any wiring harnesses or anything. There's really not too much on the sprayer that I would have thought he would have wanted to get into. But he chewed up the piece of foam right there that's supposed to block that little gap. The radiator fan pulls air through that first radiator and the second radiator and that piece of foam blocks that gap. So then it just gets a better suction. Then air is just not getting pulled right in from the top. It has to get pulled from the front through that front radiator. And we got our, is it the air conditioner one down there, the little guy? Now we don't have our piece of foam. So when we pull air, we're gonna be pulling more from the top. We're not getting as much cooling in that front one as we should. So now we're gonna need to get a new piece of foam. That stinking little guy. That's the foam. In case anyone forgot what the junk farm used to look like, well, you're not gonna remember anymore because this is what it looks like now. Uncle Roland really wants to get his farm cleaned up. So there's a bunch of scrap metal and buildings out here. And then the waterways also need some tile work and then they need to be reshaped. What we got going on here, Ron? Burying the gravel. From the oh, smart. This up and just get it down. Then it's scattered out. Using a yeah. shovel and stuff too, or what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's on the tile. Oh, really? And you don't have to dig down very far on this farm to hit clay, do you? Not through there. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I bet they just kind of pushed, took dirt out of there to build the driveway. driveway. Yeah, that is kind of funny. You can see the transition. Small driveway, tall driveway. Now I got the clay. It's just amazing what getting rid of a few buildings, the big barn, the corn crib, the grain bins, getting everything just leveled out. Ron did take the nice black dirt on top 
he pushed it over on the side. Then when he dug the holes to bury all the concrete and stuff, then he put all that clay back on. He was able to push this nice black back on top. We do need to walk through this. There's going to be a whole bunch of old tree roots. There's just going to be random pieces of metal like this. Scrap guys are taking their trailer right now. It is completely full. Ron's got about another half a load left or so maybe. Yeah, that's just a nice little pile. I'll be able to crunch that up to about nothing. This big tank, we don't know what it was used for. I think it was an old anhydrous tank, but it's like quarter inch thick. Ron said he pushed with his excavator on top and he couldn't make a dent in it. All the valves and stuff are out of it. So it's got air on the inside, so that's a good thing. They don't let you take it to the scrapyard at all if the valves and stuff are still in place because when they crush them, they can explode. Same with these old LP tanks. These ones still have the valves on them, so probably what they'll end up doing. The scrap guy said that they were going to take all these, but they'll just end up setting them out. Probably a little field somewhere, get the old pew pews out, put a couple holes in them, throw them on a burn pile, and then once the burn pile lights, it'll burn all the gas and stuff out of the inside. Then they'll be safe. We found a couple big I-beams over here. Dad wanted to keep these. These are the nice thick ones, so in case we ever want to build a bridge or something, now we have some I-beams. And then this is my cousin's car in Texas. He wants to get it restored, so he's going to be picking this up sometime. I have the title of that old 49 Chevy right there. I'm just blown away on how much different this looks. It's unrecognizable. Once that driveway is gone, there's going to be no remnants whatsoever that there was even a house here. We're gonna gain about five acres from getting this building site gone and be able to farm through here. We didn't do this as an acreage play though. We did this as we had an abandoned building site and we wanted to get it cleaned up because it's not getting any better. And man, I'm just blown away on how awesome this is. Raccoon, you ride back there on the way down? One of my favorite things about the sprayer is when you're going along, it literally just feels like you're riding on a cloud. And that's because instead of having shocks, you got these big old airbags. So air ride suspension. The leaf blower is in the back. I didn't know we had one here. Yeah, right there. Oh, heck. I'll be using that. I'll be Where charging you your rent every time you use it. It's got my name on it so I can do that. I'll be charging you for food every time you eat it from my house. Okay, we'll call this even. All right. I found a knife that I think I lost the way it looks like maybe 20 years ago. What'd you do to the tip of it? I, I'm not sure what. I, I'm going to blame it on one of you children. No, that was not to, me. You told me not to play with knives. Some, I was a good worst, kid. You were the worst one. That's not true. Oh. <laughs> when you were a little boy, like toddler, like I... We put, you know, knives in the dishwasher and you would always find, somehow find the biggest knife and you'd be carrying it around. I'd be like, oh, can I have that knife, Cole? Well, the first movie you let me watch was Michael Myers, so what can you expect? Well, it wasn't me that let you watch that because I don't do that kind of movie. Mm -mm. Our dad definitely would not have taken a bunch of 10-year-olds to a rated R horror movie at any time, oh, ever. Never, mm -mm. never, never, <laughs> never. He wouldn't have done that. Your brother needs to come mow. Take that up with him. I'm not the mowing department. Yeah, I see that. Sorry, take that up with HR. Dad's HR. Oh. We're assigning roles around the farm now. Oh, Dad's HR. I'm CEO, Cooper COO. Dad's HR. Who are you? Head of HR. Mm, we can't have that. <laughs> Only here. <laughs> Why don't we go with... You can be the custodian. No. No. Cafeteria lady? Mm-mm. The disciplinarian? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, custodian. Sorry, dis disciplinarian. Waterway's looking good. So is that one. See, Mom did not pick her asparagus patch. Oh, man. Initially, I thought the air conditioning in this was going to be about as useless as can be, but it actually works surprisingly well. I think Cooper's got this set up on an appointment to get the windows tinted a little bit darker. And they do have a tint to them now, but Cooper likes that dark tint. And looking at Ashley's, we had a big, big pile of trees. Dad got those burned up while Cooper lit them. Yeah. Oh, I can feel the heat. This is going to burn up to about nothing. We kind of wanted to get them burned up here while the weather was nice and everything was green. So that way we weren't accidentally burning things we didn't want to. Dad just came over here. He pushed his pile of cedar trees back together. Not much left at all. These things were like 70 feet tall and that's all that's left. And there was like probably 15 of them. 
Getting the mix made prepared for soybeans is pretty easy. We're gonna be using this product for soybeans and the back left one for soybeans. We just need to pull this pump off. This is just a manual one. We need to get more flow meters on our stack and our mix mate. We actually have them on order right now. Cause right now we can run three bulk products through this without having to handle anything. It runs through all the software on this. And so I think we're gonna be getting the one that has five. So then we won't have to use any of these small little hand pumps anymore. But we need to get that hand pump cleaned out. So we're just gonna run water through it. It's got some, I think that's boron in that back container right now. So we'll just get that rinsed out. And then this one up here, We'll pop it off the bottom of that tote. We'll hook it onto our rinse pump, and then we can just circle clean rinse water through it. And we'll end up running it up inside of the sprayer and go run that off on the side of the field. And then we gotta do all the rinsing and stuff on that. But otherwise, these other two totes, nothing's gonna change on them. So we just have to clean one. The chemicals we're dealing with are nothing to mess with. So I don't wanna get any on the camera. I'm gonna leave you guys in the semi here. I'm just gonna get my gloves, get all my protective gear. We get everything cleaned up and we'll be back once we get everything switched over and cleaned out. The inspector's here, the inspector's here. How does it look like he's doing? He's doing, he's doing pretty thorough. See, he's about, I've saying been that because I'm up here and he knows I'll beat him up if he says otherwise. <laughs> this is actually my Uncle Wayne, my mother's brother. Pleasure to be here, da uh, Daddy <laughs> DC. We got the real supervisor coming. Came over to get sprayed with the hose. It's hot. <laughs> You came to the right place then. Yeah. Just go down there, look your husband in the eyes, tell me he's ugly, see if he'll <laughs> spray you with a hose. First, I was just gonna start with the boom and the wheels, and then as I'm doing those, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I might as well do the bottom side of the machine. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of splattering on the windows, and I'm like, I might as well do the windows. And then I figured I might as well do the whole machine. So I ended up doing the whole machine. So we got everything drained, got the inside of the tank cleaned, we got the booms drained, we got them cleaned, we cleaned up the filters. I have one down there that I need to get a new O-ring for. Somehow it disappeared when I took it off, and it is not on the ground anywhere. What? We can't act more like your brother. What brother? Him? Are you kidding? So we can go all the way up to this line, but yeah. we can go anywhere we want. You getting it? Primitive. Ah, uh, it, it looks British. <laughs> what was that, uh, Summer? You can only, you have to throw it a certain way. It's hard. Hey, that's a bummer. Yes! Oh now go to the, for the next for us one way. Yes! I'm looking forward to supper tonight because Nave and I are trying something new. I'll be honest, I don't cook. Nava does all the cooking. But lately with me being in the field super late, like it's 11 o'clock p.m. right now, look how red my eyes are just from looking at equipment all day. But with me being out all day and Nava doing her thing all day, we just wanted something during these super busy times that made it simple for us to make a meal. And so we actually decided to try HelloFresh. So today is gonna to be kind of my first experience with it. And I'm really excited about it. So HelloFresh is just shipped right to the door. All the ingredients are inside of this package and we got our meat laying there. And then it just tells us everything we have here. And then just a nice list of what to do. Simple, easy step one through six. I do not like eating out. I do not like gas station food. I just don't like junk food in general and during these late nights like this, that is basically the only thing that is available. So I really like HelloFresh because of this. It's fresh food and it actually costs less than going out to eat. Don't mind our trash that's not actually there. During college, I ate most of my food in the house, but I had a really bad tendency of just making the same meal literally for three years straight. Another nice thing about HelloFresh, we get variety. We got some paprika chicken and a lemony sauce. Creamy dill pork tenderloin opt for chicken cut or organic chicken cut, whatever that means. It sounds healthy. So Neva and I are gonna toss some of this food together, probably more Neva than me. My thoughts is I'm gonna make you do the nitty gritty of the work Wait, and hey. I'll cook it. Is that broccoli? It is broccoli, you do not wanna eat broccoli? I don't think we were designed to eat small trees. Oven only goes to 550. No, that's not what I said. 425. Can you cut quieter, please? It's rust. Is that really? <laughs> it's fine. I got it. I was, we're just getting our iron levels up. Just extra iron, supplementing. All right. Are we not this. done with this, though? I've been doing this for like three No, minutes. this is going to cook for like 30 minutes, so hurry up. Well, this cooks for 30? Throw it in the... What are we supposed to do in the meantime? <laughs> cook the chicken. 
Oh, I mentioned it. Did we see what this is? This is cranberry time chicken. Cranberry time. Oh, that was a cute way of saying it. I like that. Cranberry time. Are we gonna like it or not? I hope so because I'm hungry and there's nothing else to eat. Okay. I'm just waiting for this food. Ooh. Oh, geez. Yeah, close that back up. Do they look good or do they look like they need more time? I couldn't tell. It was too high. <laughs> Not quite like, uh, what are they called? The chefs that make really pretty looking plate. But it's not about how it looks. It's about how it tastes. The carrots. Carrots are good. The chicken. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Is it good? The little trees. Stop. That was so gross. Mm. Well, it's good. I like it. That's good. It's got my stamp of approval. I think this is a no-brainer when it comes to adding to the meal prep during busy seasons. Ooh, that sauce is good too. But don't just take my word for it. HelloFresh was nice enough to give 16 free meals plus free shipping to anybody who wants to give it a try. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code COLE16. 16. 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh.com, code COLE16. We're not going to be running maximum efficiency this morning. Dad is off at the airport, so that sprayer is not going to be running yet. And Dad is also going to wash that one up. This one's already to go. Right behind that lid is a big main filter. So when the spray comes through the tank and comes through that line, it gets filtered by that filter first in case there's any chunks of stuff before it ends up coming down this into the boom. Because if those chunks get down into one of these little nozzles, it can plug the tip, which is what we don't want. On this sprayer, we have a second set of filters. We have some inline ones here. So once it comes down the boom, after going through the big filter, then it goes through these before it goes to each of the individual five sections of the sprayer boom. So they just have this little baby filter on the inside of it that look like that. We ended up finding a good chunk of crud the first time around. I don't know what that is, a piece of rubber or something. Basically all that would have got down into the lines of the where the tips are so i'm glad we had it but right there is where it screws on to there's supposed to be a little o-ring on that lip and for some reason one completely disappeared I, it was not leaking when i was running it so it leads me to believe there had to be one on there stealing cooper's cummins this morning now this guy's either gonna work or he's not so i got three just in case he does oh yeah that's gonna work perfect Oh. <laughs> Better shut the air conditioner off. Holy cow. Yeah, that's that's dark. <laughs> the dark. Should be nice though when the sun's bright. I think we're gonna go get one sprayer and see if we can maybe whack that off. It's hard to know. Is it gonna rain fairly soon or wait? Or... One weather app says that it's gonna rain tonight. We're gonna get a decent amount. Another one says we're not gonna get anything. You look at the radar on both and they're both, the predictions for both are different. It is, it's hard. Which one had the loose bushing, this one or? I think so. All right, look at that. I got an extra tube. It's like we knew that was gonna happen. Okay, let's see if we can beat the rain. They were talking rain right now, like an hour ago. They moved it over to six o'clock. Are we gonna get it or are we not? I'm probably gonna quit around five if it's coming at six, because I'd like a good hour for it to dry. During our 10 minute drive, we already have weather change. The stuff we're putting on is rain fast after one hour of being on the plant. So that means once it's on there for an hour, we get as much rain as we want on that plant. It's not gonna wash it off. It's already in the plant. The problem is, we're talking rain in 30 minutes. It's gonna cost about $5,000 to spray this field. So I could either test the weather and hope that it's wrong, get it on there and then get rain within that hour. And we'll probably end up having to redo it again, which would basically be $5,000 out the drain. So we're just gonna play the safe card. I would really like to spray right now, but we're just gonna wait it out and see what the weather's like tomorrow. We drove half a mile down the road and I think we made the right decision. It is coming much quicker than we expected. Good news is now we are fully prepared with this machine, it's all cleaned up, it's greased up. We're ready to spray with this one. Dad's getting his machine all cleaned up and greased up right now as we speak. 
sprayer trailer's ready. This weather changes to good. We're gonna be ready to rock and roll. We should be able to get everything done in a day with both of the sprayers. As long as we have water, we'll be able to keep cruising. I had to get a little creative with how I ended up stacking the sprayer trailer and I ended up having to redo my configuration a couple times. Right now on the stack, three of those flow meters go directly to the bottom of these big tote containers. So this one, that one, and then the other one down low over there. But these top ones, I have, see the hose coming out? It goes right to that pump sitting on top of that. And then this pump goes over here. Now, if you notice, we got one pump, we got two tanks. Praxodyne's supposed to be bringing more flow meters for us so that way we can go to all the toads and we won't have to use any of the hand pumps unless we have to do like a gallon jug dump of something but that is not here yet so that's where the little creativity had to come in that is volunteer corn killer up on the top then we have methylated seed oil up on the top there that just kind of makes everything sticky and then that is a water conditioner we have really hard water with a lot of iron in it so that kind of goes in the water it chelates it all it basically it separates it out so then that way the stuff that we're spraying to try to kill the weeds doesn't bind to those iron molecules and then become not as effective or at least that's the way i understand how it works <laughs> I guess until it starts raining, we're gonna work on this driveway. From the Oliver, that direction, we are going to make it all rock. Right now it's a big old lumpy mess. There used to be a grain bin right where I'm standing. So there's some chunks of concrete buried under this. And it's kind of doing one of these real unlevel. We want to get that bad boy smoothed out. And then over there, that's gonna be grass. So I need to get all the big chunks of stuff out because lawnmower blades don't really like hitting that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a little bittersweet someday when we get an overhead door in here. Last time we got one quoted, it was like $20,000. So for the time being, we've just been still using the clamp to pinch them together and then you use a ratchet strap to whatever's parked closest to the door and then you do that same thing on the other door. It builds character and it's gonna be one of those things we look back at someday and we're like, you remember when you did that? That's the stuff you remember. We always want better, 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 but oftentimes the things we talk about most, it seems like are the way things used to be and the challenges that we had to overcome and like how fun it was or how crazy it was that we did that specific thing or had to do that in order to get the job done. Kind of like this brick door. It doesn't have a handle on it. You gotta be very careful to get your fingers out at just the right time. Or like when we had to walk all the way around this building in order to get in here. And now we got a door here. Those were the days when our cardio was a whole lot better. I think we made the right call, not spraying. Here's the rain. This part here over along the building, all the way up to the edge of the concrete pad. This is all ready to have rock in it now. Now we just got the little grass part. That's not looking too bad. Hey, for someone who's never had formal training on a skid loader other than just hopping in it and figuring it out. I think it would make Ron the bulldozer guy proud. I just gotta call it supper's done. We're gonna let this rain fall nice. We're supposed to get like two or three tents tonight. We're gonna call it an early night. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the link in the description. Please pick up some merch. We'll see you in the next one.